Let's across. We've been beginning our Easter worship with, uh, with the uh, call to worship that's on the first page of your bulletin. are in the midst of the season of Easter as, uh, as we go through, and you've stumbled into Music Sunday at the 11 o'clock worship service, uh, where we have all of our adult choirs uh, give some gift this morning, which is appropriate this morning because we're preaching about gifts, and the gifts we give in worship uh, especially. So we'll enjoy all those good gifts. Let us uh, begin by singing When in Our Music, hymn 851 in that red hymnal.
Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, and to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share in his risen life with the whole world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Yes. We are, um, we just completed a number of home meetings about the sanctuary uh, renovation that we've been talking about for the last couple of years. And uh, we appreciate, we had uh, well over 100 people attend those meetings. We appreciate all those people that came and were part of that and asked questions and heard details. Uh, we, and we've asked some of the people that were enthusiastic uh, in the midst of this process to, to speak to us and uh, not, a hard, not an easy thing to do and Donna was uh, nice enough to say yes when I asked her. Uh, she is the chairman of our welcome committee and she's going to tell you what she's enthusiastic about in this uh, space. Sanctuary renewal. Are you kidding me? Of course I'm excited about it. What parts of the renewal plan are my favorite? Well, since you ask, I, I think to answer that question, I would need to look at our property through the eyes of a visitor, of a first-time visitor. So here goes. I'm a visitor, a first-time visitor. I pull onto the property, and the first thing I notice, I think, would be the, the landscaping and the parking lot and the visitor parking spaces. As I come through the Welcome Center doors, I notice it's light and airy, happy. The, the Welcome Center flows into the Fellowship Hall, another cheerful place. As I enter the sanctuary, it's a bit darker. The, the, it's beautiful, but it's a bit darker, a quiet, somber place. Um, I think my mood is changed a, a bit. Now let's back up and it's your turn to be a first time visitor. What would your thoughts be if you pulled onto the property and you saw grass that needed to be mowed, thorns, weeds, you had to fight potholes before you could get parked. Without realizing it, your mood is set. In a way, the landscaping and the care of the building and the parking lot is the welcome mat of Messiah. The welcome center is, is the foyer, all leading to the sanctuary. Mood. How much of our worship service directly involves mood? I would say quite a bit. With all the musical gifts of our choirs, they can actually change our mood to awe to joy, to reverence. Mood is an important part of my worship experience. Mood helps, I, I want to say helps keep me on track, and it kind of does. Uh, mood sets the stage for what is to come. It, it does help me focus on the Word of God. I'm excited at the thought of bringing the light, airy feeling of the, the Welcome Center into the sanctuary. Uh, the sanctuary is beautiful, but, but with a little more light, a little more things, we can change the, the mood. Already, I feel a difference just with our new lights. It just changes how, how our mood is. The framing of the, the um, stained glass windows is one of my favorite things, that we'll be able to focus on these beautiful windows. The soffits with the lights, I'm, I'm imagining it's there, the, so, the soffits with the lights underneath to focus on the, the windows and light the outer aisles is another thing I'm really excited about. Now, I do like the soffits. I like the soffits. Jeff is giddy about the soffits. Well not, well, not the soffits exactly, but what's behind the soffits. The ductwork for a new heating and air conditioning system. New flooring, upholstered pews, refinished pews, pews situated to focus on the cross and the, the altar are so exciting. I'm so impressed with the Sanctuary Renewal Committee and the process they went through, and the experts that they conferred with and hired to, to come up with our present plan. 
a, a deep personal thank you to all who served on that committee. Jeff and I are proud to be donating to the, the sanctuary renewal. We feel that it is money well spent on something that will last quite a while. We hope that those of you that can will join us in contributing. I look forward to seeing everyone on June 8th when we gather together in worship to come forward with our financial commitments that will help make all these plans a reality. Thank you. And uh, please put June 8th on your calendar. Uh, it's going to be a good celebration. It's Pentecost Sunday, the second highest day in the church calendar after Easter. And uh, we are going to combine the 9.30 and the 11 o'clock service and have uh, w one great big service uh, celebration uh, for the Holy Spirit that lives and gathers us as church and for, um, and for whatever commitment we make to uh, the space for the next 30 years of worship uh, and where God's calling us. So it'll be a good day. So tell you, and then we're going to eat afterwards. We've got uh, city barbecue tents and everything else. It'll be a great celebration. June 8th, don't go to a graduation party till after you worship. Uh, Austin, come on up. Uh, this is uh, Austin English. You've gotten to know him for two years. And uh, he is an MIC student at uh, the seminary, our MIC student, Mission and Con Ministry and Context. And we, uh, uh, we have delighted in his gifts. I, and he is the youngest MIC student we've ever had in the 11 years I've been here. And, uh, but, uh, but he holds his own and surpasses nearly all of our MIC students. He's been wonderful. Uh, he's led us at 8 and 11 o'clock every Sunday if there's a a prize for showing up uh, and being eager to help, Austin would win that prize. He, is, he, he has been here more than any other MIC student I've ever had. And, uh, and we are going to miss his presence. He's going on to Ascension Lutheran Church for his, scene, or for his internship, where he'll spend a full year of doing nothing but working under another pastor, uh, Pastor Timothy Mueller. And uh, so he'll be right up the road at Morse Road if you want to go up and uh, say hi to him some Sunday after you worship with us, of course. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, <coughs> council and uh, you have uh, given Austin a gift to say, to be a, uh, our appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you'll be able to uh, greet Austin afterwards. Continue with scripture. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to, other, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another of work the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Stand as we welcome our gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact who do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Swing down chariot, stop and let me ride. Swing, swing down chariot, stop and let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord, calm and easy. I am at home on the other side. Swing, swing down chariot, stop and let me ride. Swing, swing down chariot, stop and let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Long and easy, I got a home on the other side. Swing, 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 wasn't too particular about the chariot wheel. He just wanted to see how a chariot feel. Why don't you swing down chariot, stop and let me ride. Swing down chariot, stop and let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Come and easy. I got home on the other side. Don't you swing, swing down chariot, stop and let me ride. Swing now, chariot, stop and let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Calm and easy. I've got a home on the other side. Swing now, chariot, stop and let me ride. Swing now, chariot, stop and let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Calm and easy. I Down and he got on board. Cherry went up 
bumping up and down that road. So particular about the bumping on that road, he just wanted to lay down his heavy load. Swing down Sherry, stop and let me ride. Swing down Sherry, stop and let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Home and easy. I got home on the other side. Swing down Sherry, stop and let me ride. Swing down Sherry, stop and let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Come and easy, I've got a home on the other sermon's done, too. <laughs> Let's pray. You're a good and gracious God. Uh, we thank you for uh, the wonderful gifts that you've given us, uh, gifts of song, uh, gifts of praise, gifts of welcome, gifts of presence. Please help us to share these gifts with those around us in our community, both inside this space and outside of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sometimes, like the men, uh, gifts are so obvious that they smack you in the face and, and you just like to sit and dwell in the gift that is being offered. My brother is really good at building things, Jimmy. And, uh, and this was evident at a, at a really young age. In fact, my mom created games, I think partly to, to get us out of her hair, but also to, to bring out the gifts that, that Jimmy had. We played this game. We had a ton of Legos growing up. We had boxes and boxes full of Legos. And so my mom would name an object, and the three of us would have to go off, Jimmy, Kyle, and I, would have to go off and, and try to put together this object that she had mentioned. And so we'd go off to our three separate rooms, and, and we'd put together an airplane, for example. And so I'd, I'd get the pieces, and I'd have the little flat pieces would be my, my wings, and, and a bigger block piece, that'd be my cockpit, and, and little flaps would be uh, made from the little Lego pieces, and that would be that. It would look almost like a, a stick figure version of, of a Lego airplane. Definitely not that creative. But I was always the first one done. I guess that was probably my goal more than, more than anything wonderful. So we'd get back and, and show our three pieces, and, and, and Kyle's looked a lot like, like my airplane. But Jimmy, my brother Jimmy, would, would put together this airplane that, that was incredible. You know those pictures on the front of the Lego boxes that uh, of what everything was supposed to look like. I, I think Jimmy's looked even better than that. They were detailed, they were intricate, they were, they were beautiful, and he'd describe in great detail what, why he did this and, and why he added this piece, and they were incredible. He had a wonderful gift for being able to build things, and, and it made me think of that because this past weekend he graduated from Arizona State University with his master's in architecture. He's got a wonderful gift to be able to build things that he's been able to use since he was a very young kid. And although I was jealous of this sometimes, this gift that he had, I, I was always glad to be in his presence when he was using it or sharing it. And I think this is the ideal in the church as well, that we can be a place where we hone our gifts and, and share those unique gifts with one another so that the people in the presence of this gift can be blessed. This week we continue our sermon series on, on worship, and specifically we're looking at gifts both given and received in the midst of worship. Because worship is the center of our lives together as a faith community. Here at Messiah we're involved in, in a whole bunch of different ministries. We have a bunch of outreach ministries, we have wonderful fellowship ministries. Uh, we're, we're involved in, in so many ways all over the community. But it starts here with worship. It's at the center of who we are as Christians, it's the center of who we are in the midst of our faith lives. And so Pastor Carl and I often spend more time than any par other part of our job looking at worship, involved in the planning of it, 
thinking about how people can best utilize their gifts, thinking about our sermons and, and how that matches up, and, and talking with those other people that are leaders in the midst of our worship and, and how they can best utilize the people that they're involved with to best make worship as meaningful and worshipful as possible. And in the midst of, of those conversations that we have and, and other conversations I have with, with people outside of the church, there's two questions that seem to come up over and over again. And the first question is this, why do I need to go to worship? And if you're a parent, I would imagine that you've probably had to answer this question a time or two. I, mean, I know my parents answered it with just because I told you so. And that was good enough in our house, but maybe it's not good enough in yours. And people often ask more to that. They say, well, I can worship God out in nature. I can see God in, in a beautiful sunset. I, I can worship God in my living room. And I think that that is true. I think you can see God in, in a beautiful sunset. You can see God in, in beautiful nature out in the woods and other places. I think you can even see God in the midst of your living room. But there's something powerful about coming together as a community of people, a community you might not pick, you might not hang out with, but a, a community of people that brings different gifts than you to be able to come together and worship. There's something powerful about that. Because I'm able to receive gifts that are different from my own. Because let's face it, me singing on my own is a sad story. I'm one of those people who, who thinks he sounds all right when I'm singing along to the, to the radio. I've been told otherwise. But even if I was as good as I think that I am, my voice alone doesn't sound nearly as good as the many voices together in a song with beautiful instruments accompanying it. And even beautiful gifts don't sound as beautiful on their own. You know, this week, my wife Laura was, was uh, at our parsonage practicing uh, the flute. And maybe this is my own stuff, but, but I honestly get tired of her practicing the same song over and over again at home. And it, the dog's barking at her because she's not thrilled with, with Laura playing this instrument that sounds weird. And, and it doesn't sound that good because the acoustics in our house are not that wonderful. And so it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me at home. But when I'm in this space and she played this special music like, like she did at 8 o'clock, it was a wonderful gift given in the midst of worship. And so if the conversation goes further, then, then why is it good to be in worship? Uh, people often ask, well, well, what does good worship look like? What does good worship look like? And many of us have a different answer about what that is. Maybe it goes back to a time of our childhood where we can remember exactly what kind of instruments were played, and, and that's the kind of worship we think is wonderful. Maybe it's uh, we want an organ with everything or a piano with everything or, or, or the drums really add a lot to worship. Maybe it's some kind of part of the liturgy where we, we really like the confession to begin worship or, or, or other aspects that really make our worship wonderful. And I get this question asked uh, a handful of times, and my answer is pretty simple. Good worship is an encounter with the holy, an encounter with the holy. I've experienced this with all kinds of different styles of worship. But at the heart of worship is an encounter with God. And I think this happens when we share our gifts in the midst of worship. I would challenge you not to experience the holy when you hear Joanna Boswell and Mike Lannis sing Were You There on Good Friday. Or our sixth grader Corbin Russ play an incredible piece of music on the piano. Or when any one of our wonderful choirs that we'll be able to experience quite a few of this morning play a wonderful song that matches the theme of the day and, and there's light streaming out of the cross behind them. Those are wonderful moments in our lives together in worship. And we encounter the holy because of the gifts that people in our community have been willing to share. And there are many ways in which we're able to do that. Many ways we offer and receive gifts in worship outside of those obvious ways, like being up front and, and leading musically. I think there's certainly a gift in being able to walk up to someone and let them know that you are thinking about them and praying for them because you've sensed that something is going on in the midst of their life where it feels like is not all peachy keen. 
And so your presence in this space is a gift that makes worship in this community a better place. Because when we encounter the holy in this space during worship on Sunday mornings and Sunday afternoons, I think people will encounter the holy when they see us outside this worship space, filled up in here so that we can go out into the world and fill up other people. A couple of weeks ago, we had a, a woman uh, who had never been to Messiah before, and she wanted to come to the grief class on, on Wednesday night. Uh, and she must have been nervous coming into this place that she had never been to before. I mean, I can't imagine the guts that it would have taken someone to, to see the grief class on the sign and decide that, that was going to be the night in which they were going to walk into the church with 200 strangers walking around. And as she entered, I'm sure she wondered if it was a good idea to continue on to the class or if it was maybe a better idea to, to turn back around and, and maybe try again another day. This building can be pretty big and overwhelming for those of us who know it well. It's easy to get lost in. I can't imagine what it's like for a visitor sometimes. And I saw her, her kind of deer in headlights look as she, she looked at me and asked quietly where the grief class was. And so I, I walked her down to the class, and, and waiting outside the door for her was, was Lois Beery and, and Cindy Owens. And both of them have a wonderful gift of hospitality. And Lois embraced this woman with a hug, and I would imagine that in that moment, this woman no longer felt as if she was among strangers and that she had experienced a peace of the holy. Filled up in here, experiencing the holy so that other people will see the holy out there. But gifts of hospitality and presence and music are not the only gifts that we offer in the midst of worship. We're also able to give of our wealth, and, and we've been blessed by so many gifts of wealth over our over 50 years of ministry. The reason that we have this space today is because people in the 60s, with Pastor Fritz sitting out there, were able to give a wonderful gift of wealth so that we're able to worship in this space. And it's our hope that that's going to be able to happen once again so that we can continue to worship in this wonderful space in a renovated kind of way. Because one of the things that we hope happens in the midst of the renovation is that we're able to, to bring the altar out a little bit more so that it becomes more of a meal of participation with the gifts of God that everyone can be involved in. Because when you get together for a meal with family and friends, one of you doesn't sit really far away from everyone else unless you really want to. But hopefully, if it's people you enjoy being with, you want to be closer to them. By having the altar come out a little more, it will allow all of us to feel a little more intimate in a pretty big space. One of the other things we hope that'll happen in the midst of the renovation is that we're going to make the chancel one level. That'll allow all the, the stuff that's currently up here to go away when we don't want it up here. So that when the musicians that are offering a gift, will, they'll be able to offer it and not have wires and clutter and all kinds of other things get in the way. And when they're not offering those gifts or when those instruments are not being used, they'll be pushed off to the side and out of the way so that the space can be clutter-free so that we can focus on the, on the cross and those that are giving their gifts, and that can be the center of what is going on in the midst of worship. This will allow us to focus on having an encounter with the Holy. Because our worship lives are better when you are here sharing and receiving those gifts. And this is not always an equal transaction that happens one for one, that, that what we put in, we get out. There's weeks when you're a gift for others by adding your voice and your presence to this community. And there are other weeks when, when other people are a gift for you. But no matter whether you've received or, or given gifts in the midst of worship, or, or you feel like you've not received any gifts at all, everything kind of falls flat for you. The, the music doesn't turn out quite like you hoped. And, and maybe the sermon didn't quite happen for you. I've heard rumors of that happening. Of course, that never happens here. But know that it's in that meal that we celebrate every time we gather together for worship, that everything else leads up to. The meal that Jesus said he would be truly present in, that is where we will truly experience the holy each and every time we worship. Because it's that gift that fills us up so that we can go out and share the good news and witness that we have received the gifts 
and we share them with the world. Amen. Prayers this morning are going to be wrapped or um, within him 742. If you want to stand, please. What a friend we have in Jesus, we'll sing.
made alive in Christ, and filled by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those people in need. Holy, mighty, merciful Lord, we thank you for showing us what true life is. And we thank you for this chance to worship you this day. We ask for your blessings to be poured upon us. And pour these same blessings upon the church around the world, ensuring that all that you have made and all that you care for daily thrives in this life. Lord, we ask that you care for all your creation that is sick, wounded, or simply down in spirit. Lift them up and show them your love. We especially remember Bill, Jerry, Pat, Sharon, Kurt, Hans, Joyce, Donna, Keith, Denise, Kimberly, Harlan, Meg, Dan, Santino, Linda, Andrea, Mary, and Marilyn, and all those we lift up out loud or in the silence of our hearts now. Receive our prayers, merciful God, and dwell in us richly through Jesus Christ and our life and our Redeemer. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that side of peace with one another. In your saints uh, this time, and uh, while you prepare to give your gifts of, of financial offering.
promises as we know that you will. Just as when Jesus gathered his disciples in the night in which he betrayed him and broke bread, giving it to them, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, and it's been given for you. 
do this in the remembrance of me. And again, that night, he gave, poured the dr cup, gave it to them to drink, saying, this cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We promise to be there that night and this night always, whenever we gather around this bread and this wine, that your presence may be full and whole for us. Help us receive now that good gift of presence, Lord, so that it not only fills us up, but we go out and fill your world with that same love. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the table that God has set. Thanks be to God. Come and eat. We'll commune our assistance first, and then we will have you come forward.
Stand. Let us pray. God, it is good that you fed us again at this table. May we be filled now in such a way that your grace pours from us and ignites your world with love. Amen. Uh, announcements as we leave. A couple of them here while our choir gets ready to help us with the benediction and closing. The quilts that are gathered around me here are uh, part of a, an outreach group that we've got, uh, quilters, uh, that uh, put these together. They made about 30 quilts this year. They meet uh, every other Wednesday night or, or something like that in the midst of our uh, Messiah night. And uh, these are going to Children's Hospital. They're all being donated to Children's Hospital. So we wanted to show them off before they before they get sent away. Uh, also, uh, tomorrow or today is the first day of our golf league this year. We are at Willow Run at 5:30. It's a four-person scrambles, ten dollars uh, to play nine holes in a cart. It's a good good deal, good way to meet people. And even if you're horrible at golf like I am, 
uh, there's probably someone better than you, so you will advance down the course. So I, uh, so I encourage you to be part of that today at 5.30 out of Willow Run. Um, show up and you don't even have to tell us. Just show up and we'll put you on a foursome and send you out. Uh, tomorrow we have the Senior Lunch Bunch that's meeting and they are having uh, fried chicken. So they need to know if you're going to be there or not. So let Virginia or Ellie know. I think they're both in this worship service. Yeah, I see them both standing, sitting right, standing right next to each other. So let either one of them know or let me know if, if that's the case. Uh, tonight we need a, a one more driver for our, uh, to pick up our two homeless families down at the uh, IHN uh, shelter over by Ohio Dominican College. We've uh, picked them up and brought them here and made them feel welcome and given them a good home for a week. Uh, tonight's the last night and we just need someone to come and pick them up for us. If you can do that, it's about an hour worth of your time today. It'd be a nice gift for them and a nice gift for all the volunteers that worked so hard on that this week. Uh, is that all of it? Last Messiah night is this Wednesday night. So come, come be a part. We have one more Easter Alleluia before we leave. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Seven sixty three.